Welcome back to Draymond Does Gaming. Draymond here playing more Pale Beyond. Going into week 15 and we've got penguins. A small group of emperor penguins have waddled near to camp. You notice Mr. and Miss Gloss studying them closely. Look dear, aptendoids. How extraordinary. Astounding. Must must be the first sighting of their rookery. Kurt. Do I, um, seem afraid of the sled dogs, that is? Well, are you? No! Have you ever owned a dog as a pet? No, my family does own several cats. Ha, I'd be more afraid of those clawed beasties before I feared a little pup. I suppose you're right. Speaking of them, always make sure to pet them every day. Um, the furnace, let's feed it with whatever we've got. Yeah, these guys are good for feeding the furnace. Feed the furnace, and we also get rid of some of that, um, Freezing. I don't know why it does that, but... So these are the elephant seals, okay. And seals are good for that. Maybe we do one more. Okay. That Kurt doesn't know what he's on about. Lost his own, own little world as he is. Must think it's still 30 years ago, and beg and pleaded to be, even be here, just to feel important. Glad you're not listening to him. You listen to man living in the past, you'll never see the future. Eh, somewhat true. A little bit in the hoosh pot. We're close to 50. Okay. Let's see. Taking requests. Let's see what we've got here. There's a penguin. Many penguins. Interesting. Well, an emperor penguin waddles into the tent. Squawk! Templeton looks to you confused. Captain, watches you carefully. Almost wish we could have given it a fish or something. Captain, last week's ice fishing was quite the success. We were able to gather a decent haul with some patience. Poor fish. Thanks for providing the manpower. Some extra rations will certainly come in handy. Captain, that Hammond is has quite the temper on him. He's one to dig his heels in at any opportunity. We have enough time before winter. We should focus on hunting. I know you agree with Hammond last week, but I ask you to reconsider. Very well, I'll take your suggestion under consideration. He puffs his chest out as a smile forms on his face. I need sea sense, Captain, sooner the better. Captain, a truly urgent request. Well, perhaps not urgent, but, well, when inspiration strikes. Collect yourself, Mr. Gloss. Right. Well, this opportunity to write up a proper study of the birds on this region. I ask that some of the science team be allowed to write uh, this week to write up our findings. May risk us losing the opportunity to harvest as many of them for resources as possible. Um, no issue there. Go ahead. I think this is fine. Thank you, uh, Captain. The history books will smile for you. Smile on you for this. Emperor Penguin, Squawk. Okay, looks unamused. <laughs> Ridiculous. Watches you carefully. Squawk. Looks at the bird begrudgingly. Shoot. Watches you carefully. <laughs> Interesting, eh? Um. I wonder if we can continue to do ice fishing or not. 
really should put my phone on silent while I do these, shouldn't I? Arf! Calm, Stanbury. They're just curious of our presence here. Arf, arf! You hear a long penguin call. Your baby penguin sneeze. You hear a penguin squawk. Make a decision regarding the penguins. Sign crew to hunting the entire colony. Assign a team to hunt some of the colony. Huh. Well, I mean, if we hunt the entire colony, that would probably get us quite a lot of food, and we'd be set for a while, but... But... What is there we can do, right? Maybe some? One Emperor Penguin? Two Emperor Penguins? Three Emperor Penguins? Four? If we did this... Four, five, like six, or the entire, hmm, like what else do we do, right? I, f I feel that, that that can't be the right decision, to hunt the entire colony. Hunting some of them, okay. done. The team get to work. As much as I, you know, don't overly want to, um, we do need to. Okay. We will go out and scout some because we should. There's no harm in going out and doing that. And then we do need as many people as we can to get these seals done. And we're out of people. Uh, the med bay, frostbite, wounded, Right, she's only freezing, okay, so that's fine. Alright, command them to rest. You notice the penguin has made its way into the medical tent. N no, you stay out of there. A new patient. This one's more ordinary than the rest of the crew. It's pecking at my medical bag, I'm sorry. You can't have what's in there. Did you just apologize to the bird? Well, I don't know how you remove a penguin from your premise. Having trouble, doctor? Oh, Captain, I could use a little assistance. Seems you have a, something of an unwanted, unwelcome guest at camp. Uh, there are many more outside, you know. What? Okay, this shouldn't be an issue. He gently grabs the bird by the sides. The squonking of the penguin eases, ceases as he gently eats it out of the tent flaps. There, done. Three cheers for the triumphant Dr. Nutley. I do suppose I was getting worked up over a small issue. That's normal on the ice. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to grab as many shots of the colony I can before they're gone. If our tent has another vicious bag-pecking intruder, let me know. Perfect. Still sneezing. It's calling. A chew. More sneezes. More. Is it just going to keep doing that now? It's funny. Okay. Intriguing, to say the least. Alright. I'd like to get us up to, like, a... These are not... Like a 50, basically. Um... Hmm. 
none is that none of that is really good for anything. Okay. I guess we call for dinner. The crew have their meal. Dinner is shared and stories are traded. The penguin colony moves on. Alright. Those two are bickering again over dinner. Hammond and Kurt, both of them are talking shite. Someone should talk to them. I, I know when a punch-up is brewing. Arf. I ain't up my dinner, are you? You ain't getting a sniff out of this. Get running back to your master. Arf. All right, just a bite. Hm? Reading something? Yes, a book on poetry. Can you read one? On poetry? Not of poetry. It's an analysis of the technique. Oh, I've always wanted to read. That's so. You don't mind helping, would you? I suppose I could lend you a book, something simple. Thank you. Nice. People are getting better. Air's a bit tense these days, isn't it? Not surprised. Time's catching up to us, right? Can't take another week looking out at nothing but the ice. Seems Kurt and the Mole Man are still going at it. Not surprised the Chief doesn't bend in disagreements. Maybe he should. A simple apology would allow us to return to our work without issue. What makes you think, believe Hammond should be the one apologizing? Common sense. <laughs> nice dogs. You don't have work to do, child. What are their names? The one you're petting? That's Maxwell. That's a person's name, in it. Are they all that boring? No. Captain, there's a matter I wish to bring to your attention. I intend to train one of the crew to handle the kennel in case I, well, if the worst should occur. I do not wish the crew left without a kennel master. Good idea, Cordell, but let's hope it doesn't come to that. And we have her loyalty. Fantastic, that's huge. Thank you, I will ensure someone suitable is chosen, but we'll speak more on this later. This is your time of rest, correct? I've been thinking, Shaw. If this expedition is indeed the end of the line for Kirk, darling, I wonder how they'll speak of me when I fail to return. What will the newspaper say? The newspapers? What of your family? They'll herald your return and nothing more. Don't lose faith. Yeah, I think of the family. A better idea of what they'd say, Shaw, and it's more troubling to think about. Funny, isn't it? No matter what you do in your life, you never get to see your own legacy. Hm. I was thinking, if I die, the crew's aft. My work would be wasted if I end up going under. Captain, if I go, you better keep them alive. I'm not keen on dying for nothing. If you die, I'm just as long as the rest of them. I'll keep everyone alive. That includes you, Hammond. I promise you, Hammond, nothing you do will be in vain. Better not. I don't ask that much, Captain. I ask you that. I trust you. Better than most on the ice. Do me a favor, Shaw. If I don't make it back with the rest of you, take care of Grimly. Losing Hunt is one thing, but both of us? Um, I'll try, Junior. I promise you that. Aye, thanks, Make sure he's set up well. He deserves that much, at least. So is this just events to gain loyalty? Are we about to have, like, a, another vote or something? <laughs> Shaw. If anything happens to me, make sure Junior has my accordion. That's all I've got to give. I'll make sure of that, Grimly, even though I don't really like you. Aye. Thanks. What is he at? He's so far away. Like, look at where Junior is. Hammond's up there. I mean, basically everyone is. Cordell is just at that mark, which is insane that it took her that long to get there. Hmm? Oh, a good evening to you, Captain. Apologies for the distraction. I was enjoying a textbook. Anything interesting? This was the first textbook I ever read when entering the field of botany. I'm more familiar with it front to back. 
Still, it's more than beneficial to reacquaint myself with my field of expertise, particularly when I've spent so such time now removed from it. Um... What caused you to preserve botany as a study? Fascination with the class of life form that predates us by millennia, and will survive us by millennia. You know that why plant life interests me to this degree, Captain? Their long history, as you said? Yes, their long history, and even longer future. A plant's primary goal is to ensure the continued survival of their species, yet the plant is stationary and vulnerable. What I find truly impressive is how they develop to take advantage of their circumstance. They take advantage of their actions to, or actions of others to ensure their own existence. Take your average apple tree for existence. Birds come, they feast upon the fruit, then the seeds stored within scatter to the ground, and sure another will grow. Quite an ingenious system, is it not? A form of life so seemingly simple has outsmarted just about every other species that would otherwise cause it harm. And yet, not a single plant can survive out here. Uh, or, perhaps you should look into different line of work. They adapt as all things do. Um, they adapt as all things do. I don't think I don't see that as anything special. Ouch! <laughs> and adapting for much long, longer than anything else. I find that more than remarkable. Plants have more power than we give them credit for, Captain. Half the crew pine for a substance thousands of kilometers away that can't grow here. Well, I assume this topic is quite a bore for you. I won't keep any longer, Captain. Not necessarily a bore, but, you know, that's, is what it is. Remember, will develop freezing. All right, I guess we're going to be stuck on this. I mean, if we, yeah, we don't really want to drop that. Dogs of Ravel, Dick became freezing, Runt's dad became freezing. Okay. Frostbite. Tashi's freezing, even though he was cured of frostbite. Could have been worse. Going into week 16 with this nice coffee here. One thing I'm sure that they all wish they had. Interesting. We only have one decision. I guess we do it. We start the day off with requests. We can't even... I don't like that, actually. Well, let's take requests. Kasha charges into the tent. Captain Templeton! You're out of breath. What is it? It's Kurt and Hammond. They're about to knock each other out. Come quick. Uh, I was wondering. She bolts out the tent. Best see to it, Captain. Interesting music. You rush over the commotion near the boiler. Do you have any idea how much you're jumping the gun? And how much you bloody want to keep playing in the snow? Playing? I take my work as seriously as you. You don't actually believe that, do you? Fine, we'll do things your way. No preparation, no stockpiling. We can all starve to death, but sooner. Great idea. We're not going to get any more prepared or prep waiting around. We need to hunker down. You just like feeling useful and you don't want it to stop. You don't care about the lives on the line. Of course I do. I have experience on the ice. I know the dangers of the winter. You're just too stubborn to do anything any way but your own. And when you don't get your way, you make a big song and dance about it. Even go sneaking behind my back to the captain. Can't help yourself. You're a bloody glory hound, always looking to be the big man. Not hard that you can never be the big man. Watch it. It's clear this could quickly turn and turn ugly. Recall asking for dinner and a show? Um, I don't recall asking for dinner and a show. As Kurt and Hammond notice you, Kurt eyes you before scanning the audience that has assembled. Captain, I'm sorry, I just cannot let this matter go. You're going to get us killed, you idiot. I'm not the only one who agrees with this course. Then get them killed. Get yourself killed. I don't care what you do. It's enough, both of you. Fire your gun in... 
Before you can unholster your weapon, Mr. Zack reveals his revolver, firing it in the air. Blast startles two of Cordell's dog who go jolting across the ice. Oh no. And out of sight. Well, that's bad. Still, the sudden noise grabs the men's attention puts a stop to the fighting quick. Scientist is quickly removed of his weapon by Templeton. The crew looks uneasily at the man. After the exchange, both men look to each other wearily. Their aggression's taken out. Two of them left with only a glow of shame for their actions. Hells. Well, that certainly could have gone better. Despite his jovial comment, Kurt is unable to bring a laugh to anyone, including himself. Both of you should be ashamed. We're supposed to be professionals. Um, did you both get that out of your system? Two men let out weary sighs almost in unison. It's a waste of everyone's time or just leave? No, I'm just going to leave. You walk away making your way to your tent. The two men left to wallow in their shame. As you walk away, you are stopped by Templeton. Uh, Captain, I must apologize for the insubordination of Mr. Zack. We should not have left him keep that weapon. It's a liability. We're lucky no one was hurt. Uh, he just set an example for thus the crew. Team in line. This is your failure, not mine. Uh, he, said, he just set an example for the rest of the crew. I see. I can respect that view, Captain. We best hope that crew instead follow your example. As you walk away, you are stopped by Grimly. Next time, do it yourself. Appreciate your help, Grimly. Hmm. God. I can do it myself. I was trying to when somebody else used their weapon. He goes in, we stay alive. Really that simple. Okay, we need to cure the two freezing people. For sure. And then... Because it's supposed to be pretty darn cold. Yeah. Neither of these are overly great in the furnace. 12, 18, should get us right up to 50. Uh, we'll go to the kennels. It sucks that we lost some of these. We need food for the week. You are correct. Don't really want to do one more because it's huge, but that demoralization would be very good to cure. Alright. Meaning that we can then put at least them in the infirmary and take the demoralization off of you. Alright. Take requests. Oi. What a lovely morning. Let's go to Cordell first. I want to get her loyalty back up, Captain. It appeared that most hunt earlier scared off two of my dogs. I would hope you will have someone assigned to bring them back. Of course, I'll send a team to return them to camp. Needs three people, eh? Yeah, we're, we're doing that because we need to. We want her loyalty back. Thank you. Leaving an erratic scientist with a farm firearm certainly feels like an oversight. It does. But it's fine. Captain, I was surprised when you sent Ward my way, but he's taken to the job well. I call me Dr. Timmy Ward now, Captain. Well, you need a certificate for that first, but he's been a great help. Thank you, Captain. Well, it seems the young Ward has taken his to his new calling. Never expected that boy to move into medicine. I suppose people wouldn't surprise you, Captain. That's good. Ah, Captain. Good news, my penguin write-up is complete. Six research. Nice. You seem awfully proud. I most certainly am. Thank you for allowing me the time, Captain. That's actually quite a big boost there. Shaw, I need spare timber. I'll carve up some totems. 
Totems? Aye, for good fortune on the ice. Some feel uneasy after what happened. Can't believe that land lover had a gun on him. We're out. If you have to find any wuss, wood, you're welcome to you. <laughs> we don't have any. A good idea, but I'm afraid we're out of timber. Hmm. Shame. Agreed. Very much agree. Okay. So it looks like then we can go here. We sure can. Two Johns. Get rid of that demoralization. And the Med Bay. The Frostbite. And yeah, we'll have to do that. There we go. Um, now we need everything else. Okay, well, first off, one, two. Oh, that's huge, actually. Those are fantastic. So, four elephant seals? Or three elephant seals? Huge. Um, and this would be one, two, three, we can even send that. Yeah. That's so many. Um, I'd like to get some more fish just because the fish have actually been pretty decent. We are out of dogs, though. How much fish do we have for... And that would probably only get us four if we use two to get four. I think just the next day we'll, like, because we only have two people left that can do anything. Yeah. Oh, yeah, make sure that we do all that. Okay, I think that's going to be it. So we'll call the crew for dinner. Crew have their meal, dinner shared, stories are traded. Alright, lots of talking. Been bothering my dogs for some time now. They're having fun. Are you shaken by this morning event? That, I've covered much worse incidents in the city. Yes, but you could return home after that. Grant my dogs a rest. And grant one to yourself as well. Mm-hmm. Dogs need the rest, as do I, as do you. The fight was something, wasn't it? Two jumped up egos... Cracking under pressure, I imagine. You've never been in a fight, have you, two Johns? No, nobody's ever tried to fight me. Not surprised you're massive, but you wouldn't hurt a fly. <laughs> this is true. He is massive. Camp, you notice Kurt hesitantly approaching Hammond. Um, I should um I should apologize for what happened this morning. You should or you want to. You shouldn't give in to immaturity. We should be bigger. Um, more mature men. Alright, let's leave it at that. I'm not going to be starting on you again. Right. Good. Aye. The two share a brief silence. Be on your way now. Right. Of course. Two men return to their duties as you return to your own. Okay, and same thing with these guys. Captain, you have a pen, don't you? There's something I need to write. Sure. I've been giving a great deal of thought. I'm going to make sure we all make it back home. But if I don't, I want you to pass something on. Should I die, I want the ownership rights of my films divided up among my children. I'll set them up for many years. Could you pass that on for me, Robin? I'd be honored to carry that out if it comes to it. Thank you, Robin. I knew I could trust you. Should have known this would happen. The chief was bound to fly off the handle eventually, eh? I can't feel say I feel bad for the Mr. Darling, anyway. We call it a night, see you for breakfast. 
stares at you before nodding to his sleeping bag. Can you believe the nerve of that Hammond fellow? He's lucky Kurt didn't just wallop him. Kurt could have handled it better. But Hammond is a prick, yeah? <laughs> Notice the decline in my writings. At first I blamed the cold, then I realized I would often drink coffee as I write. I mean, more difficult to keep up the energy without it. Um, how much coffee would you drink to make such a difference? Perhaps it's your mood affecting your work, understandable in the circumstance. You should get more sleep if you require more. How much coffee did you drink? I admit I'd grown quite dependent on the caffeine. It's a shameful thing. I've often struggled with sleep, no matter how exhausted my body would feel. It often wouldn't come. Best to channel those hours into research, I've always believed. Sometimes. Okay, we're at a 50 and 53, so I think we're okay at this exact moment. Yeah, fuel is getting a little rough, but we kind of need to do it this way. Three, five, nice. Couple freezing, couple wound. Uh, you know, it's okay if one person is like doubled on that. Four people, though. Five people. A lot of freezing people. But I think this is okay. Week 17, eh? It's just flying by. All right, this will probably be six weeks at second camp. So this is going to be around the time where they wanted us to, like, move on, right? The furnace, Hammond. Yeah, no food in here. Ouch. One, two, three, four, five, damn, six just to get up to 50. Okay. Captain, about what happened last week. Sorry. Alright. Keep your lip, Captain. Lock down and prepare for winter. Feed the furnace. Alrighty. I don't think we're ready to lock down yet. So let's enter the request tent. There are no requests. Okay. Call the crew for dinner. No, so we need to do a few things here. Um, I mean, obviously we need to... Oh, hello. you ever get into a fight? Are you still thinking about last week? I Well, have you? Um, once back in my school days. What? Really? Well, I didn't really intend to. I got dragged into one somehow. How'd it go? Not well. Okay, so the med bay... For sure, um, I don't know why it does this sometimes. One, two, and three. Minus two available crew. Are they all in here, though? Because I don't want that to, like, fail because of... Like, he's obviously right there, <laughs> right? Okay. Okay. I think we're okay. Uh, let's go pet all the animals. Okay. Let's take a look at all of this stuff because there is... To be perfectly honest, there's like so much. And we've already done all the hunting of the migrations. That's where we started. Okay. I, I actually really do want to get all this fish because the fish have been actually really good with um, foods and things. Let's send some of the scientists and the engineers getting as many penguins as we can. And then I'm not opposed to sending out Uh, 
um, more people, more scouts, etc. Oh, we're out. Um, hmm. Is it worth one fish to get the extra scout now? Probably. I think so. Then we only have one person who's freezing right now. Uh, do we hunker down now? That's a great question. Um, if, like, do we feel like we have enough stuff? I feel like we don't. But I also, like, it doesn't feel like we're gaining a lot of stuff. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see. <sighs> I feel like we should continue going a little bit because we need Oh man, it's it's starting to get really cold. We're going to need We do that, it'll cure that one person from freezing. Okay. Hmm. But like, we don't have much else here for it, right? Like, we're not even up to 50. Lock down camp and prepare for winter. Like, I feel like we should go one more. Maybe. The crew have their meal. Dinner shared, stories are traded. I don't feel like this is the appropriate time to hunker down. The season seems to be winding down, it would seem. We likely have a handful more weeks before the wildlife begins to clear up. Do you ever share your rations with the dogs? They do hunting after all. They're right there, eat from spoils. They have their own rations. I'm sure they prefer my cooking to that broth. You may try them. I won't stop them. Okay. Doctor, good evening. Something on your mind? Her, I was curious. An awfully quiet, well, after last week's scrap-up. Your visits have been scarce. You've kept your own at dinner. Well, I am still licking my wounds, proverbially speaking. Last week's incident was something of an embarrassment. Well, I just wanted to check in, see if you were okay. Be fine. Just need to settle this damn pride of mine. Thank you, son. Er, doctor. Oh, you're welcome, I suppose. Heaven to question. I told you, I'm not getting quoted in your bloody report. Calm down, it's not about you. You worked with Mr. Temple before, yes? Regrettably. You have to know his age. He was enlisted in the record, and estimating based on appearance is difficult. He's younger than he looks, that's all I know. <laughs> Great. You got close to Shaw, quick. I was designed by our fin or designated designed designated by a benefactor to be second officer of this expedition. I'm simply duty my duty. I sure. I've been looking over the contracts and I feel there an update should be made to your own. For as far exceeded your pay scale at first mate. If we turn the land, I will arrange it so you receive Hunt's promised pay in addition to your own. Um I'm honored, but that pay should be divvied up among the crew. What if Hunt's still out there? 
Um, thank you, Templeton. That's rather considerate of you. I disagree. It's only fair you be compensated appropriately. I see no reason to do otherwise. Okay. So these guys are all just going to bed. Got it. Okay. Let's call call it here. I want to see as well if Tashi actually gets healed here. Because... Yes, yes. I mean, that's a lot. Yes, yes. You guys are getting frozen on the... Everything. Okay, Tashi was healed. Okay. That's quite huge. Okay. With that being the case, like, seven weeks at second camp, um, like, we still have a little bit of time. Do we push this over one more? I think we do. Um... Mr. Templeton, would you happen to know if Kurt has any children of his own? I believe he does, several. I understand his oldest son is a lecturer of natural histories at Granford. Why do you ask? Well, I notice he tends to not mention any family. It's either, hardly either of our business, Doctor. Right, apologies for my curiosity. Where are we went around for, Captain? Can't keep up like this much longer. Winter's coming in. Better cover up before the cold takes us. Yeah kind of what I'm feeling like today. Take some requests. Are there any? There are no requests again. This is so odd. If we do this and raise in the heat, each signed will instantly cure a random person of freezing. So, I mean, that's Darn nice. I'm gonna do that. Okay. Three people were nice. That's fantastic. Because I think what we're going to do is hunt as much of this as we can for. Probably scout there just to see what else we... Oh, nice. Two. Uh, three and four. Okay. We have three people left over to go hunting these ones. Or to get fish. Oh, man. Fish is probably better. And they cause malnutrition. But they help out with so much more. Um, I mean, we could send Harold as well, who would probably turn into Frostbite. I don't think that's worth a fish. Okay. Um, and then... We send you here. Crew need fe fed for the week. Crew need fed for the week? It's an odd way to put that. I'd like to keep those for as long as we can. I, I mean, that's so... Actually, that should be enough to get up to 50. Good. And then... I guess we're going to lock down here. I think with that stuff coming in, we might be okay. Lock down camp, prepare for winter. The way he was talking about it made me want to go... Well... We probably don't get very much longer of this. So... Send out as many people as we can. Let's try it out. And see where we're at. 
minus 10 loyalty? Wait, what? Oh, did, because we didn't, are you, oh man. Okay, we didn't have anything in there. We put, should have put stuff in there. I thought we would have. <sighs> That's bad. It's like I... I don't want to go back to the save now and be like, all right. <laughs> so I wish it would give you like a prompt. Are you sure? Because you didn't put anything into here. That would have made sense. So many people are freezing. It's fine. Could be worse. Could be worse. Kind of see what the implications of that is. Do we just go into the next week where we do absolutely nothing? Or does it like... Oh, it skips us forward. Intriguing. And with that, we're now in Act 2. So thanks for watching. Uh, Dream and Death Gaming playing The Pale Beyond. And from here, um, I guess we'll head into the personal log, but we'll start that next time. Bye for now.